Uh, thank you very much for coming, and uh, well done for finding your way all the way here, down the twisty corridor behind the door marked Do Not Feed the Leopard. Uh, I made that joke already, sorry. Um, so, my name is Brian Borum. Uh, I am an engineer at Weaveworks, uh, somewhat known for WeaveNet, uh, but we do other stuff. Um, this is Dan. Hi, Dan Williams, and I'm a um, container networking engineer at Red Hat on the networking services team, and I work uh, in upstream Kubernetes and uh, OpenShift and also, obviously, CNI. Uh, yeah, so we're both uh, maintainers of the CNI project, and uh, so it says it says deep dive. Um, we uh, we have some slides. We're going to go. Uh, actually, I, sh I should start by asking, like, so who who um, who knows container networking at a really deep level? Couple who. Uh, who came here because they don't really know container networking at all? They just wanted to find out what's, what's going on. So that's like a third. OK. OK. So I think we have some slides that, that pretty much go from the beginning. So apologies to those of you who know it, everything already. Um, uh, we are with lots of time for questions. Um, so if you brought questions, uh, save them until we get through the introduction. Um, but uh, yeah, please please do ask questions. Uh, let's kick off anyway. Uh, yeah, so this is what we're going to talk about: what, who, how, what, how. Um, the CNI project. So when we say we're maintainers, what what all of exactly? Um, CNI is is uh, is an interface, container network interface. A little bit of glue conceptually uh, between. Um, an orchestrator and a network implementation, uh, but but in practical terms, um, what we what we maintain. Oh, people still coming. Welcome, welcome. Um, so we're just doing some introductory slides, and then if you have questions, uh, we're well. That's what we're here for. That's the deep dive part. Um, so the uh, the project owns um, two repos in which uh, there are the spec, which is kind of the most important part. Uh, the spec is, is mostly written in English. Um, libcni, which is a, a library written in Go, uh, which is used by a number of the implementations. You don't have to use it, but it, it gives you kind of a step up if, uh, if you're working in Go. And uh, what are called the base plugins. So, um, so those are uh, some kind of very simple plugins, mostly um, talking to Linux features that do networking. Uh, there's a couple of Windows plugins in there nowadays. Um, anyone, anyone interested in networking on Windows? One, okay. Two, three, okay. Excellent, excellent. Um, so, yeah, just to. Uh, let me see, what have I covered? Um, a reference implementation, yeah, a skeleton that you can, if you wanted to write your own plugin, uh, you could start with the skeleton. Um, those are the URLs there, it's on GitHub, it's all open source. Um, and, okay, let me move on. Am I handing over to you at this point? I think so. Okay, Dan's gonna move on. So um, as Brian sort of alluded to, the two main parts um, of CNI are the spec um, and that the specification is we try to be vendor neutral as a project. So it's not just for Kubernetes, even though Kubernetes uh, is one of the main users of the CNI specification and the reference libraries. Um, but we are also used by and have maintainers from other runtimes, um, for example, Cloud Foundry, um, but then also um, used by Mesos as well. Um, so it's, uh, we try to make sure that the needs of all the runtimes are served, but that um, the specific features of certain runtimes are not embedded into our specifications or our plugins. We really try to find a generic way of addressing the needs of those runtimes through CNI in a way that um, all of the runtimes that we serve uh, can actually benefit from it. 
Um, we also, uh, excuse me, the specification also defines um, the control flow for how the runtime should call into plugins so that everybody who's writing a plugin that works on the runtimes knows what to expect, knows how it gets the data um, that it can use to configure the networking and also how it reports that uh, its status uh, or an error back to the runtime. Uh, the spec attempts to keep things simple, um, and you'll see that a little bit in the next slide, um, but we, we try to minimize the API so that it's more flexible for all kinds of networking solutions as opposed to imposing a specific model um, on uh, different network plugins and the different runtimes. We found that that um, helps increase the ecosystem um, because it's a lot easier for all the different networking use cases to actually uh, do what they need to do with containers as opposed to um, you know some of the more uh, uh, structured models. Um, you know, one that comes to mind is uh, CNM uh, for a Docker side that kind of had a little bit more of a structured uh, way that it viewed networking, um, and that's fine for that project. CNI um, kind of took a different approach and just has a couple of simple operations that um, you know work at a, a slightly lower level than that. Uh, another thing that it defines is the uh, configuration format. Um, and that's just a you know fairly simple JSON-based format um, of key-value pairs uh, and also some uh, embedded uh, maps in there as well. Uh, the items in green are the are some of the keys, and this is an example for one plugin. Um, it would be different for a number or for different plugins that. Um, you might encounter. The items in green are just some of the standard keys that the specification um, has specified. Uh, there are kind of two sets. There's the standard keys that everything is required to support, um, and you know those are required for some of the operations that runtimes do, like Kubernetes um, wants to know what the name uh, of this network and what this plugin is. It uses that to actually go out and find that plugin, provide logging information so you know what's going on, that kind of thing. Um, and the type actually identifies how you uh, call that plugin and how you find that plugin as a file on disk. Um, and then also, for example, the IPAM section defines how um, plugins uh, have their IP address information um, specified to the plugin so that the plugin can do what it needs to do uh, for IP before passing it back. Um, this configuration is fed to each CNI plugin operation. So it's when uh, CNI runs the network plugin for a given operation, uh, this JSON is sent to the plugin, and that's how the plugin can figure out um, exactly what it's supposed to do. Um, but then there's also, uh, actually, we'll get to that in the next section. Um, but this configuration can be stored on disk, and that's often how it's used. Uh, if you use Kubernetes, for example, um, that's by default what Kubernetes does and how it finds the plugins to use. There's a file in etsy cni net.d that describes the plugin that you want to use for your container operations. Uh, but it doesn't have to be. It can actually be stored anywhere else. It can be stored um, you know, by the runtime itself somewhere. It can be in some other random database. Uh, all that CNI specification requires is that that uh, runtime sends the configuration in the standard format to the plugin in a specific way. Um, so yeah, for the execution flow, um, what CNI does is it defines a limited set of operations, which um, as of this spec version uh, is the add operation, the delete operation, and the version operation. Um, the add obviously, or maybe not obviously, is take this container um, and add it, add a, excuse me, take this container and add a network to it or add that container to a given network. Um, delete is, you know, clean up, remove this container from a network, and version is just kind of a generic non-container specific operation to say, you know, what is the version of your plugin? Give me some information about you. Uh, plugins themselves are executables. Um, they're just binaries that the runtime will actually execute, um, and they are fed information um, such as the operation name through uh, environment variables and their configuration through standard in. Um, they are spawned at specific times, so the add operation will obviously be spawned, or the, the plugin will be spawned for an add operation when the runtime wants to attach that container to a given network, um, and once the uh, uh, container runtime wants to tear down that container, it will uh, execute the plugin with the Dell operation. 
Uh, there's also a facility for container specific data because most often the configuration that is given to the plugins via standard in um, is kind of a, a static configuration that just describes the network that the container is supposed to be attached to. But there are some things that are container specific that change. For example, um, in, at least in Kubernetes, the name of the container, the namespace of the container. But there's some even more generic things across runtimes like, you know, what are the bandwidth requirements for this container if you want QoS? Or what are some port mappings if you want to map that container's uh, internal ports to ones on the host? Those kinds of things are obviously not the same for every single container on that machine that you're running. And so that stuff can be passed to the plugins um, in a standardized way uh, that CNI has declared uh, through the spec. And the last thing is that plugins report their result, and those are things like what are my IP addresses, uh, what are the interfaces uh, that I have created as a plugin, um, you know, what are some routes uh, and DNS information, and those kinds of things. All those are reported by the plugin back to the runtime so that the runtime can do intelligent things with it. At least in the Kubernetes case, it doesn't do anything intelligent with that yet. Uh, you know, we'll get there. Uh, some of us who are CNI maintainers are also uh, um, work on Kubernetes itself as well, and so we kind of, you know, try to enhance the specification as best and, and the reference plugins as best we can, um, and then bring those enhancements back to the runtimes that we work on, whether that's Kubernetes or um, uh, Mesos or, you know, any of the other ones. So uh, the other part of CNI is that there are a certain set of base plugins, uh, and we try to keep these plugins up to date, and these are part of the regular release process. We want to uh, eat our own dog food and prove our own specification, uh, that it actually does what it says it does, and that we know exactly what we've done when we update it uh, before we actually roll those updates out um, to the rest of the world as a spec bump. So uh, the plugins that we typically have, um, or that we, we currently have are Bridge, Mac VLAN, IP VLAN, host device, uh, point to point, um, and we recently gained some Windows plugins, uh, thanks to contributions from CloudBase, Microsoft, and others. Um, and uh, most of these plugins are what you would consider the primary ones that actually do provide direct container connectivity from uh, or to to something on the host. Um, the second category is IPAM plugins, and these would actually do the IP address allocation. So you can kind of view the first ones in this list as kind of like layer two. They just provide the connectivity, um, you know, at a uh, kernel network device level um, or some other uh, mechanism into the pod, or excuse me, into the container. Um, and then the IPAM plugins, uh, like host local, DHCP, and static, actually provide the IP level connectivity, determine what IP address that container should have, um, and then uh, uh, handle the um, handle the allocation on the host to make sure that two containers don't get the same IP address. Um, then finally, there's kind of a set of meta plugins, um, and these don't provide direct connectivity, they don't provide IP addresses, um, but they provide certain things on top of that, whether that's bandwidth or QoS guarantees or twiddling different settings inside the container's network stack um, or, you know, things like port mapping, stuff like that. So there's kind of a wide set of plugins. Um, we accept other plugins kind of into the reference set, uh, but we try to keep those plugins fairly simple, fairly generic in use case, um, and there's many other CNI plugins uh, that are kind of outside of the reference set developed by different vendors that conform to CNI, um, but they're much more uh, specific to a kind of architecture or to some vendor's product um, that are out there and can be used, but they're not part of the CNI reference set. Back to Brian. So, <coughs> That's the, the what, the um, code that's in the project. Uh, the people in the project, um, me, I introduced myself already. Uh, Casey from, are we calling it Coros or Red Hat or IBM or? All of the above. All of the above. Uh, Dan, you've met. Uh, Gabe from Pivotal who have Cloud Foundry, which is um, uh, one of the other users of CNI. And uh, Matt from Tigera who do Calico. Um, so that's the specific maintainers. Uh, we do have lots of contributors. Um, and, you know, anyone in the room, we'd love to uh, have your contribution. Um, you know, if you find a bug or uh, find one of those very generic plugins that would, would belong with a base set, um, do let us know. 
And one other thing on that, if you really like networking and you end up liking CNI and you make a, a number of good contributions, you might get invited to the maintainers team and then you get to be up here next year. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, the, the project, so we, we have a maintainers meeting once a week um, and we look through any uh, newly opened issues, we look through PRs that are outstanding, uh, we try and move things along at that meeting. Um, slow cadence, partic so basically the spec moves the most slowly, because uh, that takes a lot of debate. Uh, the the library kind of follows along supporting the spec, and the plugins move a lot faster. Um, they're actually in a, in a separate repo for that reason. Uh, I, where are we at? We're like 0 0.7 or something like that is the next release of the, the plugins. Um, uh, we're trying to declare 1.0, which would mean we're not going to make any more breaking changes. Um, so that's uh, that's a kind of target uh, next year. Uh, oh yeah, I said plugins go faster and have more contributors. Okay. Um, so since the last release, um, we <laughs> I like what you did there. Uh, added a get function. Um, and then remove the get function. Uh, so the, 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 the context of this is um, uh, how, how can you tell what's going on on the network? We only have add and del. Uh, so that means that somebody else must know what's going on. But it kind of makes sense that the network itself knows what's going on. Uh, so we added a get function. So, you know, please tell us. Um, and it just ended up with so many corner cases and it was so difficult with uh, all the different ways that things could happen that, that it, it became unworkable. Um, we literally couldn't figure out how to implement it. Um, so, so we changed tack and we said there's a, there's a check function. So you've, you've, you've made uh, a call to add uh, and what you probably want to do is, is just check that everything's still working. So if you imagine typical, typical corner case is, is kubelet crashes and restarts. Um, so it need, it's going to issue a check call for each of the, the pods. Uh, and if, if that returns OK, then we're good. Um, if it returns not OK, then kubelet will probably tear that pod down and, and restart it and call add again. So that's the, that's the basic idea of check. Um, traffic shaping plugin, so for bandwidth limiting or whatever that has been added. Static IP for people who want to give a particular container a particular IP. Uh, and Windows, I, th I think I saw some of the Windows folks come in. You want to wave your hand? Or? Yes. Um, I also saw the uh, co-chair of Kubernetes SIG network in the room. Uh, another waving of the hand. So yeah, we have, we have if, if you do have questions, um, we have the right set of people, I think, in the room. Uh, tell us what's next, Dan. All right, so the check function, it is in the specification. Uh, we're pretty sure we've got it mostly right at this point, um, but we are currently doing the implementation of that in the plugins to make sure that we've got it right. And that's kind of the one thing that's holding up the next release of the uh, plugins repo and the specification. We want to make sure that that has all the right semantics and that it's proven out in the plugins in the reference plugin set before we uh, roll it out to everybody else. Um, next up, uh, you know, we. We've been talking about a conformance suite for a while, um, but we've got the specification and everybody is kind of, you know, coding their plugins uh, to the spec, but that's not good enough. We really want to make sure that we have something to allow plugins to verify against the specification so that you can be sure that, you know, when you're running uh, Kubernetes or anything else, that different network plugins will work how we expect them to work. Um, we. You know, like Brian said, we want to get to a stable spec. Uh, we've got one or two things left before we get there on our roadmap, um, but that's coming up pretty soon too. Uh, and complete test coverage. We have pretty good uh, unit test coverage um, on all of our, our uh, both the spec repo and the library bits um, and the plugins. Uh, we want to get as far as we can there because we think that's something that's really critical to ensuring the stability of the project and of the libraries that a lot of these plugins and runtimes use. Um, and then uh, signed release plugins. We don't have those already, do we? I thought we did. I think they're they're built by Casey well, on Casey his laptop. Casey builds them, yes. Yeah. But how much so anyway, more quality can you get? You know, we we have some we have some uh, formally specified processes uh, and governance for 
uh, the CNI project, um, but we do have a little bit of ways to go to make sure that all these processes are, um, you know, as reliable and as uh, bulletproof um, as people expect them to be. Um, and lastly, something that's come up, um, you know, more over the past year is that uh, the exec model that CNI has for plugins may not be sufficient in the future. Um, you know, where plugins are a binary and the runtime execs that binary to do the operations. Um, that had been a, or is still a problem on Windows where it's not as efficient as uh, a longer running process that communicates with some kind of uh, communication channel between the runtime and that process. Um, but also Kubernetes is exploring um, ways of enhancing the network layer and the um, capabilities of network plugins. And so we want to make sure that we work with Kubernetes as one of the runtimes that use CNI to figure out um, how to build that interface uh, in a way that works for Kubernetes um, better. And that's probably going to be gRPC since that seems to be the standard. Uh, that's something we're going to be working on in uh, 2019 and uh, hopefully that will be uh, shake out in the next like six months or something like that. Um, we haven't started work on that yet, so uh, but we're going to be doing that soon. So if that's something that's of interest to you as a plugin writer or a contributor or anything else like that, um, let us know. Please join uh, CNI community and help us out with that. I, I just thought maybe we sh I should stress uh, we're all essentially volunteers. Um, so there's no uh, uh, you know VC funded startup that that is making a lot of money off CNI. Uh, we all have day jobs. Um, we we uh, we're volunteers on the project. Um, so so that's why we're talking about you know you could join us and also become a volunteer. Get a get a share of that millions of dollars coming into the CNI coffers. Zero millions of dollars. Yeah, so uh, you know that's kind of the the major things that are coming up next for CNI. Yeah, I yeah, well there you go. Um, so we're on GitHub. We had the links at the beginning. Container networking project. Um, we have a Slack, uh, which is also um, container networking. We're not on the CNCF Slack. We maybe maybe we maybe we should open up business there as well. There's a there's a See a container networking Slack anyway. Uh, uh, some of us are old timers and use IRC. Um, and uh, you can come here to KubeCon. Um, uh, yeah, lots of lots of channels. There's a mailing list as well, isn't there? Yeah, they're all they're all linked off the GitHub, or you can Google it. Um, anyway, we're we're done with the talking. Um, your turn to talk. Shall I run down with the mic? Hi. So uh, we worked on a, a plugin for Istio to handle the IP tables rules and avoid the net admin problem. Um, and just uh, yesterday, we heard the Linkerd guys have the exact same problem. Um, based on what you're saying, is that something that should be like more of a core plugin or a base plugin? Or I don't know what the term you used. Or is that something that you would still keep, you know, outside in these other projects? Uh, I don't know the details. It kind of depends on the details, right? I mean, if it's um, uh, so, if it's something specific to one product, uh, you know, probably not. If you said two, yeah, uh, we better. It probably. Well, I know the Linkerd guys said it applied to them, so that's why I thought about it. But it yeah. probably applies to anybody doing a service mesh or a proxy in front of the app. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I didn't mean to contradict you. I was just. Illustrating the choices. If it applied to one product, definitely not. If it applied to more than one, then you you know it's starting to sound like something that maybe should be in the core repo. Uh, but we'd have to discuss the details. So um, uh, open an issue is probably a good way to start. And also, um, those uh, we want people to contribute plugins and stay involved if they're interested in that plugin, um, because you know contributing plugins and then. Uh, not staying involved means that we, the maintainers, have accepted something, and then we have to maintain it. Um, and so, you know, if if you're thinking about that, um, you know, please also stay involved with that plugin and the project and help to um, maintain that particular piece of software. Because for the most part, you're probably the expert on that particular plugin, the use cases, that kind of thing. So we could use help on that count. Who's next? 
Hi, thanks for the talk. Uh, so I'm really, I mean, I. Uh, so the, this this pack is there, right? The CNS pack is there, and and, and this is standard. But we have multiple plugins, so I'm really confused a little bit about the responsibility of the plugin that implements this pack. I mean, you have the add delete uh, f uh, calls, right? But when you issue a call, what what is the role of the plugin, and why are there so many uh, different plugins? Like, how do they operate differently? What are the differences between them? Well, yeah, why are there so many different ones? It's because there's a lot of vendors in the networking space. Um, and uh, uh, we were pretty sure from the beginning that it wasn't going to be possible to pick one. Um, so the next best, best thing to picking one is make them all equal. Uh, so there's a, there's a very standard interface that says almost nothing. Uh, it says add. Have at it. Um, so the responsibility, uh, I guess it can be a little bit clouded because um, uh, you could then call a plugin which totally belongs to the CNI project, one of those base plugins, or you could call the Calico plugin, which totally belongs to, I'm waving at a Tigera person for the benefit of the tape. Um, yeah, so uh, so that's their responsibility. Yeah, whoever's plugin you call, it's their responsibility to make a network work based on the that you know that JSON specification that Dan put up. Um, maybe another point of clarification is that the conceptually CNI imagines that there is an administrator of the cluster, and that the administrator has made choices that are embodied in this this JSON, and. You know, with the benefit of hindsight, I, I think that's that's the one percent case. You know, the the ninety percent case is I just pushed a button or I, I just ran I you know I read a blog post and I ran a script. Uh, I have no idea what this config is. I have no idea why it doesn't work. Um, so you know, you learn. Uh, anyway, the, yeah, conceptually, conceptually, there's an administrator. The administrator makes choices about which plugin to use, which configuration to use, which options to turn on and off, and all of those are embodied in that JSON file. Um, in in the, the very common reality that somebody just ran a script, it, it's, I suppose it's the responsibility of whoever, whoever wrote the, the script generated some JSON probably, and, uh, and you need to track those people down and cuss them. <laughs> Does that kind of answer the question? Okay. Thanks. Um, I had a question about plugin execution in the spec. So, um, so you have it here, but you can chain plugins instead of doing exec callouts. And not all plugins work the same. So I was wondering if that was um, something looking towards the spec, so that like even the plugins inside the CNI don't handle execing potentially for like cloud providers that need to use multiple like primary uh, interfaces. Um, so like the logic's different. Is that going to be part of this spec, or is one going to go away? Or so um, uh, to the first point, um, the chain plugin stuff is kind of new. That's within the last year or so, and that's uh, spec zero point three, um, I believe, is what added the chaining. And not all plugins, uh, all the ones in the reference set, have been updated for that, or should have been. Um, but not all the uh, other vendor plugins have been updated for that, and so really for the chaining functionality, the plugins need to know uh, a little bit about that to be able to do the right thing and pass their results back and forth, read the results from the previous plugin, modify them, and then send them out. So if there's a problem with that with the reference plugin set, please, please file an issue, um, and we'll make sure that we fix that. We thought we got all of it. Um, but to the other point, a plugin chain, and um, you know what, what he's talking about is that CNI, besides just executing one plugin, it has the capability to chain plugins together so that you can, for example, connect your container to a bridge on the host, but then after that, um, you know, do some other operations inside the container, like set up the uh, port mapping uh, for that container or do the bandwidth tuning, uh, things like that. So you can kind of chain different plugins together um, and kind of compose a network out of um, a number of smaller, simpler kind of modules. Um, and 
when you do that, that chain is sort of supposed to be one network. CNI actually, regardless of what Kubernetes supports, which is you know, one plugin, one network essentially, CNI itself supports as many different add or delete operations on a container as you want. Um, so that's how something like Multis CNI multiplexes um, a number of different interfaces into the container from an, one Kubernetes call is by calling add for a number of different configurations and the same container. Um, so that's one approach to that, but the chain, each one of those add operations would be um, a chain from the container runtime perspective. But from the plugin perspective, it might just be one of the links in that chain. And so it'll get an add operation. It should do its little piece, spit out its result, and then the next plugin in the chain should see that result, do its thing, and then continue on from there. Um, so there, ideally, everything works correctly, but not all plugins have been updated for that. Um, does that kind of answer the question? OK. Talking about follow-up on that question about Multis, and I mean, people in the SIG network are here, but is, is Multis a CNI issue or is it a SIG networking issue? And just follow-on question for the check: If I have multiple plugins, do all checks have to pass, or how do you deal with? It? I haven't looked at spec, so you change it. Okay, so the first issue: It just are you talking in general about multiple network plugins with Kubernetes? Yeah. To be clear? Okay. Um, that is a point that has kind of gone back and forth with Kubernetes over a number of years. Uh, Kubernetes itself would rather kind of um, abstract the details of networking and keep those details down to the plugins themselves. And at this point, it only supports uh, one ad operation. So therefore, things like Multis or CNI Genie, those kinds of things, have been developed to maybe provide some of these capabilities for Kubernetes. Um, but they're all, uh, you know, outside of Kubernetes. And, uh, you know, speaking as a member of SIG Network, we are still having discussions around maybe how some of that functionality gets brought back into Kubernetes. Um, but that those discussions are separate from the actual capabilities of CNI, uh, you know, which is able to do these things regardless of what the Kubernetes runtime itself does. Um, and one more point on that is that uh, with Kubernetes and they've split out the actual runtimes into CRIs, or via CRI, it's container runtime interface. So the thing that actually does the container operations is not necessarily part of Kubernetes anymore. Uh, there's the built-in Docker shim one, which talks to Docker, and there's also Cryo and some others. Rocket was one. Um, each of the runtimes is what actually calls and does the network operations and calls CNI. So different runtimes could theoretically make different choices about how they do the network operations for containers. You're not necessarily stuck to the same model that Kubernetes has had for you know the past 13 releases. Um, and the second part of your question, I already forgot, so sorry. Check the check call. Ah. If you have multiple plugins, just, they all have to pass, or? Yeah, at the moment, um, all the plugins have to pass the check. Um, what happens there is that if, uh, I mean, it's the same as like add and Dell. So if you're in a chain, each one of those plugins gets called, gets its check called in sequence. And each one of those has to pass. When one returns an error, um, then that fails the check. And theoretically, the runtime should handle that by, you know, recreating the sandbox or doing something else to uh, make that container healthy. Yeah, pretty close on, on time. A um, couple okay. of minutes left, I think. Yeah, a few more questions. Have we got one more one down there. Uh, so you guys, it, it seemed like you mentioned there's kind of like, uh, uh, I would say, fewer maintainers or, you know, the level of support in all around CNI is not say as high as like maybe some of the other areas of the, the Kubernetes sorts of plugins. Is this part of the CNCF and is this a project that you guys want to take into the foundation so that it gets maintained by the foundation? There's, there's no magic pool of maintainers. You're, uh, the CNCF doesn't pay people to maintain software. Uh, the CNCF does own CNI. CNI has been a CNCF project for two years. That's why we're here. We're you know we 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 get our our logos on the stairs. Uh, <laughs> A 
Okay, so so the Ben uh, to repeat the question, uh, you 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 saying what about graduation? So essentially, CNI came into the CNCF before anyone had thought of the concept of graduation. So uh, I don't know what the answer is. Well, I, the CNCF provide, excuse me, provides some um, infrastructure to the project, um, and so there are some resources that CNCF has for the project. We could also, as maintainers and as you know, well, as project maintainers, do a better job of you know trying to interface with uh, external contributors and CNCF, utilize their resources. Uh, the um, the, the main point of it being in the CNCF is to be vendor neutral. Yeah. Uh, so the the code for CNI uh, originated at CoreOS, CoreOS. Uh, so if you are a competitor to CoreOS, you might feel uncomfortable about that. So that's why the IP was transferred to the CNCF, so it's a neutral ground. That's, that's the number one thing. That's what everybody gets from CNI being part of CNCF. Uh, the actual work is, as I said earlier, done on a basically volunteer basis by the people you're looking at. Sorry, I, I, I guess maybe I didn't understand the link between when it becomes, you know, CNCF is underneath the Apache Foundation, and if there's help in, like you mentioned, is there help in infrastructure or maintaining these things? Um, as somebody who would use products like this in an enterprise, obviously we're looking at open source, like, yeah, we understand participation, we understand those things, but we're also trying to understand what's the sort of long-term support kind of deal where, yeah, we want to build a community around some of these things, but do they help support a community or help support a project in any way? And is that significant in any, any way when they talk, at least today, in, in today's words, about this graduation concept? I, I, I don't really know what uh, what I can add. I mean, if, if, you, if you need support, if you need someone to call, then make sure you're paying them. And uh, uh, Tigera will take your money, Weaveworks will take your money, Red Hat will take your money. The, these are commercial enterprises. The, the CNCF will not answer your support calls. So what I'm saying is if, if you five guys decide, I'm moving on to something else, who takes over the – If the five maintainers decide, we're, 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 we're moving on to something else. Does does somebody fill in? Does does it just go un sort of you know unmaintained? I, I mean that's basically a, an open source question, and it's not unique to CNI. It's you know about any other project, the health of the project. Our responsibility as maintainers is to try to continue that and try to have a plan so that if any one or two or whatever maintainers is unable to continue maintenance, then you know there's a, a ready pool of people to step up. Um, but, uh, but at the same time, like, you know, that, that's how open source projects work is, you know, sometimes they, uh, sometimes that happens. But, but the, 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 the CNCF does own the IP. The CNCF has master rights over the repos. Uh, so if all five of us did take our toys and go home, yep. the CNCF could, if they wanted to, find new people yep. or new people could volunteer and the CNCF could bless them as maintainer. So you have that kind of backstop, yes. Yeah. It, a lot of what they bring is organizational governance, um, you know, technical committee kind of stuff. Most of the, they mostly leave CNI to do what CNI does best, um, but, you know, they do have that kind of backstop where, you know, if something happens, they have the rights to kind of, um, you know, revitalize the project or go out and solicit more contributors. Right, yeah. So the, the CNCF owns the repo. The CNCF will hopefully not hand the keys to uh, Bitcoin miners. Uh, yeah, anyway, we're, we're out of time. Thank you very much for coming.